Well, the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting order. First item is no long fall. Also, Sutherland. Yeah. Yes. Here. We have a regular form. This item is a public hearing. Those honorary names for Crystal Road. I was just here by giving the phone to public hearing that we held on Tuesday, July 12th. Not on. No. 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 Just as a way of the process to hear from the applicant and the town staff, and then ultimately anybody in the public that wishes to address this has no questions or comments. Yes, yes. Repeat the cycle until all the issues are resolved or for information. Once the public hearing is closed, we cannot add any information. Or take action. So I don't know who's the applicant. I guess we are. Oh, are you? <laughs> okay. I didn't realize that we did. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'd like to request that the Office of Military Affairs, the Council of Proposed um, Submarine Capital Avenue, as an honorary name for Crystal Lake Road, West A12. So this portion of Crystal Lake Road leads to the entrance to the Navy base as well as the Nautilus. Um, the town code gives the authority to name roads to the planning commission along the planning and zoning commission. Um, for the requirements of the code, the property owners have been notified on the street. Um, their addresses will not change. Honorary name is. Um, if it's approved, the RTM then has 30 days to veto the change. Um, I think the Navy hopes to have this name in place by late September um, when the dog is coming. No, we don't. We don't. We're following the normal process. Um, and again, the address is not there. It's just strictly not there. Exactly. Possibly, yes. Does anyone in the public wish to address the issue on this name change? Go ahead. <laughs> Good evening. My name is uh, Bruce McDermott. I live at 328 No Road. And uh, 
I guess I'll be brief tonight. I won't regale you with arguments for any short-term rentals. You've heard them all and probably have made up your mind by now. Uh, this is only for really talking about this. Pardon me? The item on the agenda is. is oh, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> this is just for naming the, naming the road. Right place. Oh, 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 for Crystal Lake Road. I couldn't hear what you were saying because yeah. the microphones are off. So. <laughs> Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> public communications is coming up. Yeah. All right. We do public hearings first, then we go to a regular order of business. Okay. Thank you. That's why I was surprised. <laughs> you didn't like the color of the signs. <laughs> yes. Say your name and address for the record. Yeah. My name is Bob Ross. Uh, I live in Salem, Connecticut. I'm the director of the Connecticut Office of Military Affairs. So I first raised this issue with your previous uh, town manager, Mark Goffinger, I want to say about 10 years ago. Uh, Crystal Lake was at a pretty big lake. I saw pictures of it from the Connecticut archives. So that Crystal Lake Road that curves around the front of the base used to go around a big lake. That lake started to be filled in uh, in the 1950s and was completed in the 1960s. We could never do that today, but it happened. It's history. There is no more Crystal Lake. Um, I think it's a great opportunity that we have to really celebrate um, our history and heritage of having the submarine base there in the Nautilus. And because we're going to reopen the Nautilus on September 9th, I think the date is now, I'm hoping we can get this through so when we open the Nautilus, we can do a ceremonial renaming of Crystal Lake Road into what was recommended by the, I believe, by the council as um, Submarine Capital Avenue. Um, I just think it's really important that we celebrate our history and heritage. And uh, no other township in the country can make claim to being the submarine capital of the world. And so this is an opportunity to celebrate that. So I'm here to show my support for it. I hope we can get this through in time for the, the festivities on the September 9th. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address this tonight on this issue? Open it up on any other street look at the signs that I just it was Crystal Lake is it's a driveway, you know, it's it's just the driveway to get you there. And I was just wondering why the street 12, which has no name other than the 12 look at it, is that what the type? Um no, I only I only recommended this concerning uh, Crystal Lake Avenue. And I did it because it is the it is the driveway, as you say, right to the submarine base. Uh, it, it is all about the submarine force. So you see the base there on your right and you drive right into the Nautilus. Uh, and again, we're not trying to change anybody's address here. We're just, I'm looking forward to the day when we have banners up that celebrate this as submarine capital Avenue. Just banners, just signage. The only reason I mentioned because it's called submarine capital, it makes the town is the capital. Not subways. Are you saying that subways is the capital? That's the weird one. Yeah. No, I'm just saying is that this town road is a town road. Yeah. It's in the suburban capital of the world. And it ought to be called, I think, suburban capital. Okay. That's, that's my point. Some place in this town, there should be a suburban capital. I, I completely agree. The low hanging fruit to me was the one road that has no name. Which makes me crazy because everyone said, well, what's the name of the road? It's Route 12. It's the one that gets you to the subbase because you, by the time you've gotten to the sign in the corner, you're at subbase. Crystal Lake Road just starts stacking um, in, in one minute if it's before the four o'clock now, stuff like that, you know, when the truck enters. So I think it's, it's taking a, a wonderful, powerful name and putting it onto the driveway. I will, it's allowed, but I certainly strive as the best I could. I want the talent to have the relationship. And in fact, if it's honorary, it doesn't change the name, that would actually allow us to have, have an extend down Route 1 so that we can change names three times. You'd have the submarine capital Avenue actually make it all the way through downtown through the subways. If that's the submarine capital, probably think that. Be 
Thank you, Bob. I think you've got your work cut out for you. You're going to have to name the Group 12 Submarine Capital Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's great. I, I support it 100%. Okay. I think it's fine. It's a nice name. Barbara? Yes. Yeah. Steve, do you have any comments? No comments. I have any comments. <laughs> Well, has the public hearing. close the public hearing. Be naming a or proposed name. Any discussion on the motion? Anyone have a comment? A motion to close the. Uh, Hearing all those opposed, so that I oppose motion to unanimously. Just reconsidering. And uh, well, we still we haven't voted, we voted, haven't voted on it. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that's, <laughs> and, uh, that's okay. Yeah. Suffer I think it's time. safe. <laughs> that's just to close the public hearing. Next item is. Consideration of public hearings to the proposed library in Crystal Lake Road. We have a motion for you. Does anyone have any? I'm going to make a motion then to approve the addition of honorary name of Submarine Capital Avenue. The Crystal Lake Road west of Route 12, effective September 1st. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, then we'll vote on the motion to uh, approve the uh, honorary name of Crystal Lake Road. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? <laughs> It's not going to be controversial. Okay, the motion then carries. Four in favor. Now, thank you. The motion is carried. Now you can. <laughs> Okay. Next is approval of uh, minutes of previous minutes, meeting minutes. We have uh, June 14th and June 15th. I'll accept the motion for uh, approving minutes of June 14th. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Does anyone have any corrections? Hearing none, then we we'll on the motion to approve them. The minutes of uh, June 14th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Next, we have uh, June 15th. Special meeting minutes. Accept the motion. No motion. Is there a second? Second. Mm -hmm. second. Does anyone have any corrections? I I do. Yeah. Uh, on page three, uh, in the middle of the page where it says the paragraph starts with the commission discuss the topic. And down in the middle, it says they agree that they need to define a dwelling unit and regulation. We discussed that, but I don't think that we went around it. I agree with that. I, I, mean, I, I think they we probably do need to do that, but I don't think there was an agreement. I did go back and listen to the videos, and I didn't. There's another place where we agreed to something, but we didn't agree. They agreed that they need to define yeah, they, they, they 
mm -hmm. we didn't take a vote, but we didn't even like have a vote. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I think that uh, Jeff and I were asked to do some questions and that's who like this. Then above of that, where it's it said, really, and it really wasn't a volume, and really a short term round. Because volume is the time. The volume. Yeah, no, that's, that's why. Really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, we didn't. We were sort of like talking about it, defining it as a short term well. round. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a short term round. Yeah, it has a definition. Yeah. It's just what the volume unit is very clearly correct. Yeah, I don't, that, I don't know if that could even be in there. It should probably just destroy it. And then above it, where it's uh, just above it, where it starts with the term coding, reiterated the practice town SDRs are not regulated. The current zone official has deemed an SDR falls under the definition of dwelling unit, currently permitted. Uh, I wrote down what he actually said. He said, his current, said uh, from what I have heard from Peter, he's measuring it against the definition of a dwelling unit. And he said, currently his feeling is that they fall under the definition of dwelling unit, so they cannot be prohibited. He didn't deem it. It's his feeling. He didn't say currently permitted. He said cannot be prohibited. But it was his feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think also they are permitted, like you say, they're regulated too. Yeah, well, he didn't say, he didn't say, uh, we always use a regulate at the meeting we had. At, I remember, I mean, that was related, was always well, used, never permitted, right? And, and then there was no, I think the other one's left out here <clears throat> is the question came up, and I thought it was an interesting question uh, about you know, people called the town, the town hall annex, what kind of answer did they? Was to could we do a SDR and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And I know Deb, who said, and correct me if I'm not saying it, but I did listen to the uh, meeting. Yeah, it seemed to me you said, I've been very careful to say they are not regulated. And I think that's an important thing to have in the minutes here, too. It's like to just have the zoning official statement, which was, wasn't stated correctly, is not. I think the other piece needs to be too. I would go about it. Does anyone else have any corrections? The other thing I had, there wasn't any mention of the fact that um, you know, I'm back to cannabis once out. Um, but there wasn't anything about um, the new potency and harm of THC. That was brought up as a concern when we think about where cannabis should be or shouldn't be available. <clears throat> that was uh, to go somewhere on page two, up towards the top. For example, well, there's a break. In, there's a lot of places to go, but. We added to the paragraph that starts the committee to discuss the topics presented. Mm -hmm. We found that as a sentence. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, I did give some material yeah. and stuff like that. But I guess it's important to remember that. I'm still trying to struggle with the uh, implications. Thank you. So you understand why that? Do you have something? No, like I said, I just thought, oh, you know, deemed and they're really not, they're really not decisions, so they're not fine. Yeah, good catch. I mean, no other corrections, and uh, we'll vote on approval of the minutes of June 15th. Revised. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimous. Now we move on to uh, public communications. Anyone on the uh, commission have any communications to identify? Yeah. Well, I had one. 
that I, I received a copy. Somebody gave me a copy of a letter from the state oh, the historic group of, about doing an archaeological survey of, of uh, the oral school property, making a life. I don't know if you got it or not. It was sent to the mayor. I, I do have a copy of it. I, I have story. seen it. Yeah. So, so, I don't know if people care to see it, but at least you know it. I'd be interested in seeing it. So. Yeah, it was sort of iffy. It wasn't, it mm -hmm. just said if, I think it was trying to say if there were government grants, may have been, it might be a good matter. Just offering the assistance, either getting grants or kind of an archaeological survey. Um, what they think, isn't it? <laughs> what they think, isn't it? Uh, anyone in the public wish to address this? Okay. Yeah. No. That's time. That's time. <clears throat> Uh, I'm Bruce McDermott, 328 No Ink Road, Mystic. And uh, as I said earlier, I won't regale you with any arguments for banning short term rentals. You've heard them all. You probably made your mind up by now. Uh, my next store, STR, advertises they have rooms for 16 guests. We both reside in a residential zone, of course, yet here they are, a commercial operation allowed to exist. I was going to lay a curse on any one of you. It would be that an STR moves in next to you. Uh, also, is it possible for the commission to meet on another night when it doesn't conflict with the council? Um, they cannot be here and you cannot be there. Many residents feel it's just an undue burden on facilitating town business. But as you deliberate on the prospective changes to our zoning regulations, I would ask you to return power enforcement to where it belongs, you folks. Town staff has clearly taken on the role of diminishing what is essentially your role as a policy making body and has been to the detriment of our quality, my quality of life in residential zones. And I think they've actually corrupted the letter and especially the intent of the regulations meant to protect us. Uh, I've attached a copy here of the uh, regulations from Ledger, what they've enacted. They did it through their zoning. They obviously did not read the horsley Witten summary on page 11, which is this, where they have the things that zoning regulations can do or should do in the code of ordinances. And almost all of them fall, yes, under the code of ordinances, very few fall under zoning. Um, Ledger obviously didn't read the, the Horsley Witten summary where it says residency requirements for STR owners, which I am in favor of, are not a zoning prerogative. So I would, I, I spoke to an attorney today and yesterday about this, and uh, he's familiar with this kind of regulation. He said that is absolutely not so. You can do pretty much whatever you want. So be careful about the report. It's not unbiased, and you must consider its origination and intent as suspect. I urge you to seek outside legal help if needed, and not to use the town of legal people that have been instrumental in favoring commercial interests over residential zones. Thank you. Anyone else on the public wish to address this? <laughs> Talk to the audience. Say your name and address for the record. I don't feel like I'm always speaking, so uh, this is very awkward. Uh, my name is Kenan Jones. I live at 12 on the drive in Mystic. Um, the house next to us was recently changed hands and turned into a, uh, a Airbnb, a short term rental. Um, we used to live in a quiet neighborhood. There's children running around, you know, walk or dog with the neighbors, and help each other with lawn work, fixing cars, that kind of thing. Um, since this started, there has been a stream of loud strangers that has uh, really affected what we would call a community. 
Um, people that we don't know that show up have a lot of parties. They have no interest in um, maintaining a community. They're, they're here for, again, short-term rentals, essentially um, a pop-up hotel in a, in, a, in a quiet suburban street. And uh, we have no input in that. And I was really kind of surprised that the town doesn't regulate this, that this is, someone can just do this. Uh, my 12 year old child wanted to sleep in our backyard in the tent. You know, it's a, a kid thing to do. Um, unfortunately, at that same time, there was a group of um, loud young men uh, shouting cuss words across the neighborhood and we couldn't do it. So it's affecting you know, our quality of life. So this is something that should get addressed just you know, for the, the good of all. Uh, to reduce friction. That's all I gotta say. Thank you. Excuse me, what address is that? 10 Sharon Road. That is the 10 Sharon. Yes. You're on 12 Brown. Yeah, yes. they, they're our neighbors. They, we have yeah, a general fence. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that may have been left out. That's fine. So I am Katie Jones. I'm Kenan's wife, and I'm far more comfortable with public speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so I did, uh, prior to the meeting, send an email with a written statement. Um, I so wish there were more people in the community who took the time to uh, be present. But like Mr. McDermott said, we should uh, correct my screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, perhaps we should schedule meetings but are in conflict so people can attend. So um, some of what I have written is redundant to what my husband has said. but. I feel very strongly that you need to hear um, what I have to say. So we've lived at our house for 17 years and we've seen folks come and go. We watched kids grow up, grow up. We've met neighbors while walking our dogs and uh, many neighbors we are lucky to call our friends. And even those with whom we don't share a terribly close relationship, we wave and we smile as we walk by, drive by, jog by. Here's the occasional raucous party, but those die down by dusk and they're over by dark. We know each other, we respect each other, we look out for each other, and our investment in our neighborhood and this town goes far beyond the financial. The house next door to ours at 10 Sharon Road was purchased earlier this year by individuals from Massachusetts and is currently let out several times a week through Airbnb, as Kenan stated. Its listing advertises this modest home, which is a mirror image of ours, as accommodating eight guests, and it includes two driveways, and this is my favorite, with plenty of street parking, and has a fenced-in backyard. That fenced-in yard borders our back and side yard, and boy, do voices carry. Since May, we've been subjected to a parade of strangers coming in and out of a house about 30-odd feet from my kitchen door. Yes, playing music at high volume, yelling, swearing within earshot of the many young children who live in our surrounding homes. And as you know, Robert Frost once said that good fences make good neighbors. Well, guess what? In the case of the hotel next door to us, because that's what it is, a good fence simply isn't enough. This particular hotel lists the host as Evolve, not a person, but an entity which manages multiple properties through Airbnb. There was no local person to whom one can direct complaints or concerns. I was lucky enough to meet one of the owners while walking our dog and I questioned him about the rumor that I had heard from other neighbors that he was planning to turn this into an Airbnb. Well, this was fun to watch because he whiffled and waffled and said, no, it was gonna be for his in-laws to come and spend the meeting or spend the weekend and I, said, well, actually, um, no, because here's your listing that another neighbor sent to me that this is gonna be opening in May. He denied it, like I said, until I showed this to him. And at that time, um, he grudgingly gave me his cell phone number and said to text him if any problems arose. I've texted him twice. He complained about guests being overly loud and yelling in the backyard. The most recent incident was last evening. The timing could have not been more fortuitous at this meeting. When I asked him to address this issue immediately, he called me pushy and arrogant for telling him what to do with his own property. <clears throat> Our neighborhood is a residential one. 
it is not mixed use. It is not commercial. <clears throat> Pardon me. I have no wish to dictate what an individual does in his or her home, provided that individual is not in violation of zoning regulations. I do not wish to see homes in a rapidly dwindling stock and mystic being gobbled up for purely mercenary reasons. And that is what is happening. We live in one of the last remaining fairly affordable neighborhoods in Mystic, okay? And a home next door to us that when we first moved in was occupied by an old Italian couple that used to give us basil and tomatoes and smile and we'd break their leaves is now a roundabout of strangers coming and going. And this isn't just a not in my backyard, but this is a not in my backyard, okay? If that makes sense, I think it does. Um, and also I have no wish to see short-term rentals banned outright in Groton. I know several people, some of whom are close friends who rent out portions of their own home to people. That's what Airbnb started as. And it has become through our wonderful system of capitalism for good or for ill, what it is now, okay? I don't wish to see homes in my neighborhood being like I said, bought up by people who strictly have mercenary interests in our town. Um, let me see, sorry, I have to make this bigger because I can't read up close. So I suggest that zoning institute a regulation that owners need to live on site or they need to be close by. Otherwise, these places need to be taxed for the entities that they are, okay. And I think that's about it, sorry. I'm very hot and so it's very, <laughs> my mouth is very dry. Um, you know, otherwise these really are just hotels and sheep's clothing, clothing. And, you know, something's gotta be done. We have to stop selling our town to the highest bidders. Thank you. Mr. Yes. When you had the noise complaint, what time of night was that? It was about 8.30, so it was not past the time when, um, you know, noise should stop. I think it's nine or 10. There isn't one in ordinance? Okay. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned because on 4th of July, our neighbors around the corner had a pretty, as I mentioned, pretty raucous party, but nothing that was, you know, too disturbing. It was 4th of July. Like clockwork, 9.30, quiet. Those are neighbors, okay? Those are respectful people. The man who owns the home, I believe it's two, he and two of his brothers, um, when I texted him the first time about a month ago, he said to me, well, you know, it's not very late. And what, you know, what if it were me out there with my family having a loud barbecue? What would you do? And I said, well, you would be my neighbor. And I would feel comfortable going over to you and saying, hey, excuse me, you know, you guys are a little loud. Could you maybe dial it back a minute? These are, I don't know these people coming in out of my house or my neighborhood with my son close by. Um, so really the time of day to me is irrelevant. The fact that they're yelling, playing really loud music and swearing at the top of their lungs with an earshot of a four-year-old and a six-year-old on the other side of them and a two-year-old and a four-year-old on the other side of us. Our son is 12 and um, you know he's heard us swear plenty of times, but <laughs> and our other son doesn't live at home. But you know, it's just, it's not okay. Any time of day. It's not all right. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address this? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Ian Thomas, 24 Jefferson Drive, and um, also a member of the RTM. Uh, so um, I just want to echo support from Mr. McDermott and the Joneses. Uh, I too uh, believe that there needs to be some uh, severe regulations on short-term rentals. I believe that they are a detriment to the community. Um, as far as how that comes to be, I believe it is a land use issue primarily, therefore it falls squarely in your jurisdiction. Um, now, if the town council wants to do an ordinance to supplement that regulation, I think that's great. Um, but I think primarily it should be a zoning, planning zoning driver on that. And um, to that end, I think, yes, uh, as others have mentioned, having the meetings on different nights would be good. However, that comes to pass. I know there are at least two counselors that are interested in having um, more collaboration, more active collaboration uh, on with, with the planning and zoning 
committee and to that end they want to have that discussion um i know that the manager has been asked a number of times to reach out to the planning zoning commission and try to create uh some sort of joint session it's been asked by a couple of counselors um but again seems to be uh you know maybe not the consensus of the council so i'm not sure what can be done about that between two bodies that have their own jurisdictions but we seem to have a bit of a, of a crisis here where you know there, there's right now tonight at the community the whole meeting the plan is the the town council is discussing a draft ordinance that the last town so town council came up with while you all are in active workshops reviewing the horsley witten report and also coming up doing your own research and drafting possible regulations to me that seems inefficient at best to be as as diplomatic uh, as possible on that um so I would just encourage whatever can be done to be done um, from your end. I, I know I've been at a number of these meetings and I've heard a number of commissioners remark about wanting to have a committee of chairs, having more communication with the other uh, governing bodies in town. And so I don't know how to compel that to happen when it seems like some town staff seem more committed to interfering with that as opposed to facilitating that. Um, and also to, to second the uh, mention about the zoning official, um, this is about the fourth item I've become aware of where he's made some kind of ruling that has now gotten the town all up in arms and at each other's throats. Um, so and I've mentioned this before and, and, and I've heard some of the commissioners also mention that there, there needs to be a review of how the relationship exists between the zoning official and the planning and zoning commission and i would urge you to to uh, take a severe look at those those mechanisms and and obviously this this zoning official is something's not working right there if if we're having this much controversy over rulings that he's making out of pocket so you know maybe something needs to be done there as far as the regulations and how you guys relate to him because he is supposed to be acting as your official he's your agent in town and it seems like he's going rogue in some capacity. So um, along those lines, uh, I encourage you all to look forward to seeing the next workshop uh, this Thursday. Um, I encourage you all to do your own research. I also reviewed the Horsley Witten report and I concur with uh, Mr. McDermott's assessment of that. It seems uh, slanted, again, being diplomatic. Um, so. Again, I encourage you all to do your research and, and you know, invest vigorously in this regulation because communities are at stake, people's livelihoods and their life investments are at stake. So, thank you. Just for information, there is a, a meeting scheduled for next Monday for many of the chairpersons. Good to hear. Personal uh, well, I hope to be in attendance. Thank you. We have no else. We have anyone on the yes, Kerr. Hi, this is Stephanie Kerr. I live at uh, 6 Ashby Street in Mystic. Um, I'd like to make a few comments around my concern for short term rentals. Uh, I am a member of the community group Groton Homes Not Hotels. You can read more about our group at GrottenHomesNotHotels.com. I'd like to encourage some other people who just spoke to please join. We'd love to have you part of our group. Um, our group is, has united because we all love neighbors. We love having neighbors. And in, in fact, many of us who are part of the group are neighbors and who rally together because of our united concern about the trajectory of downtown Mystic area and surrounding communities with the proliferation of short-term rentals. STRs are disrupting our residential neighborhoods and destroying our sense of community and quality of life, many of which some of the other speakers have already covered. We believe the town should enforce current zoning codes and the zoning commission be allowed to enforce them. We want to keep Grand's charm by banning short-term rentals. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Everybody's spoken. <laughs> no one's got their hand raised. All right. So we can, uh,
move on then to the next uh, agenda item is site plans. We have a uh, SIT 2206 Rogers Development Edition. Okay. Now we're back. back. <laughs> so I'm right. just gonna um, introduce the project real quick. Sure. So this project is has been normally, normally we hear from the Apple Files. Oh, okay. She, she can go first. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> No, no, no. Um, all right, so I'll do it. I'll, I'll go quick then. Um, I guess you can't pick that up. Right. Oh, yes, we can. Certainly can. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, there we are. Okay, it does work. Yep. It goes square. Really? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me tonight. My name is Seamus Moran, professional engineer in Connecticut, uh, working for Loreto Engineering Associates. And I'm here representing the applicants, Rogers Development, uh, Jonathan and Jack, for their project located at 1154 Poquanic Road in the drop. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with it. We were here a year ago um, for the existing building that was the massage therapy school. And they're converting, they're in the process of converting that right now from commercial to residential. That's what the approval was just about a year ago. Um, so what we were here before you today is for a site plan and a CAM application. We also went to Wetlands Commission um, for a wetlands application, which we received on June 22nd, approval on June 22nd for. We also had to submit to NDDB and to the DOT for a site line demonstration. Um, there are some other approvals on this site um, dating back to 2002, which is how this site got to be what it is now. There was a variance in 2002, there was a site plan approval in 2002, and there was a wetlands approval in 2002. So what you see here is a, a essentially an 11 and a half acre parcel. Um, this is the existing conditions plan, 11 and a half acre parcel with about five and a half acres of wetland in the middle of the site, um, a parking lot, partially paved, partially graveled with 86 parking spaces, a one-way drive going out to the Quantic Road, a two-way entrance on the east side that allows access to the parking lot. Um, a one-way loop is just a one-way with a right-hand turn uh, that allows access to the front of the existing building. Um, there are some minor stormwater management improvements uh, before for the existing condition. And that's pretty much it. There's, like I said, there's a big wetland body here. There's a uh, separate uh, little offset uh, one wetland We'll get in the center of the development. Um, so that's the existing conditions. So without further ado, I'll go to the proposed. This is the overall uh, proposed site development plan. So what, we'll, what we'll get into later is, is it actually it's an overall development that they're trying to do in three separate construction phases. So the full build out, this is what it looks like. There's what we're pro proposing is a two separate mixed use buildings along the frontage. Um, the existing building, as we, as we know, is going to be converted to residential. It's going to be five uh, two bedroom residential units and then 10 townhomes uh, in the rear of development. Um, I'm sorry, the mixed use development is commercial on the first floor and then 13 um, two bedroom units on the second and third floors. Um, the one, or I'm sorry, the two way drive that's on the eastern side of the property will be eliminated. The one way exit drive on the western half of the development will be eliminated. There will just be a one, uh, one two-way entrance in the middle of the site to access the, the property. Uh, 
one. So that's the overall plan in a nutshell. Um, as for the, well, I guess we can do this one in a minute, but the, there's also a shed we're proposing here. It's on the western half of the development, which is an amenity for the units to be able to put their gardening tools or stuff like that um, outside somewhere, storage. Um, the townhomes are two floor townhomes, but it's a drive under garage on the front side. The grade is fairly steep in this area, so it's actually a walkout garage. So the first floor is actually uh, one floor above the garage. So the behind the garages, there's about 300 square feet of space of storage space in each of the townhome buildings. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, within the existing building, there's another large storage room which the uh, units will be able to share as storage space. And then internal to the uh, mixed use building, there's three separate storage closets in each of the units as well. Um, across the site, there are two separate bicycle parking areas. One you can see here, the other I put where? I put here in front of this unit here. Um, so there's 10 exterior bicycle parking spots where I believe four is required. Uh, what you see here is 72 parking spaces. 10 of those spaces are within the townhome buildings and the drive-on garages. Um, there's a six, park, uh, six spaces here in front of the mixed-use building along with two accessible spaces, another eight parking spaces in this general vicinity, and our remainder will, the remainder will be in front of the mixed-use building. Um, what you see here along the frontage of the property, I should probably point out this is the MBC, so this is a relatively new ish district that we're working with here. Um, but the public uh, public use space is what we're trying to, to accomplish in the front of the development here. We want to front the buildings on the roadway and the parking behind the roadway, and then improve between the building and the frontage with some public use space. So um, what's required is 10,475 10,475 feet of public use space is required. We're proposing 14,398 um, and not a square foot less. So, um, so that's what we're looking for this area here in front to be about 14,000, a little over 14,000 square feet of public use space. Um, in terms of stormwater, which we'll get to next, there's three separate stormwater management practices that we're proposing on this site, mostly because some of the site is pretty flat in here, but we have really good soil up in this area. So um, the three practices, there's a, a detention system here in the, in the parking lot for the mixed use building. Um, that is strictly detention. We'll treat the stormwater through these uh, treatment chambers, uh, infiltration, I'm sorry, isolator rows, and we'll discharge to where it currently discharges, but we'll improve that area. The second stormwater management area is uh, the smaller watershed area here in the middle. It'll discharge to a hydrodynamic separator that discharges in this general vicinity here. The third is an infiltration system for the townhomes to the rear of the property, where a lot of this runoff coming from behind the building is actually redirected around the building, the swale, so we can treat that just in a grass swale. The impervious surfaces will be collected in a catchment system, a catch, catch basin catchment system, which will be redirected to this subsurface system in here that discharges to this flare dome section. Um, one, I think one big improvement that we're, we're making here is the DOT right of way has an easement through the property. So these catch basins here all discharged from here right to this pipe here, which discharges almost at the wetland. <clears throat> what we're proposing to do is construct a head wall, cut that pipe back, construct a head wall, put a stone riprap splash pad in there um, to dissipate some of those velocities from the discharge pipe from the road. We're not treating any of the stormwater, but just by cutting it back a little bit, putting it in a, into a, a stone uh, stone bed, it'll improve some of the stormwater from that um, as much as we can. And the two outlets that we're proposing for the other two stormwater areas are going to discharge in the same location. Could you repeat that? The two, so there's three proposed stormwater management areas, one behind the mixed use building, the one in the smaller area here. Both of those pipes discharge on but either side. Yeah, that would treat. Yes, those are treated correct. Um, moving on to the utility plan, we do have water and sewer available. Um, water, sewer, and electric available in the street. We talked to grant utilities and they're in support of the development. We 
talk to them about the routing and where everything goes and should go and how it's going to go. <laughs> We've worked on that. Um, the sanitary sewer, the townhomes will be behind the building, and be behind the townhomes and behind the existing building and connect into an existing lateral. Electrical, you can see on the plan, kind of just runs up the driveway. Um, we do have, I think, eight electric vehicle parking spaces, which we should have mentioned before, but that's what these random electrical lines are up to is the electric vehicle spaces. The water, electric, and sewer for each of the buildings um, coming from Paquan Road. This is the landscaping plan, which is nice, but I not landscape architect, so looks good. That's about all I can say. Um, but they have put a significant thought into this. Um, there's a, a wetland planting plan that is consistent with what was approved in 2002 that we're going to replant to make sure that that works. Um, in terms of in terms of landscaping, very significant landscaping on scattered throughout the city. That's about all I can say. Yeah, I have okay. a question. Yes, I'm so, oh, I, I'm just I didn't want to move on from this. But, okay. Yeah, this is I think it's a great chart. And I know that letter that you got about the National University database and everything like that. Yep. It's a rare day when you're six. So exciting. <laughs> That's the like um, so uh, and they're all blooming right now. They're yeah, it started in the June. Um, Let's see what we get. I know, I'm going to ask um, what the are, but I was any idea where they might be? I was just curious absolutely. because they said somewhere know, historic or something, maybe. We don't even know. Well, they can't actually tell you where they are. That's why they give these big, big no, blurbs please. on them so people don't go and like mine them. Um, so we don't actually know if they're on our site. We're going to we'll find that out. This entire area is pretty much already developed. I'm not right. sure what's going on back here. I'm not sure that's where we'll have to put his focus. Who knows if we're going to find something? I was just so the NDDB, we submitted our application preliminary assessment, and they came back with six either endangered or oh, threatened wow. um, species of plants. Yeah. So there's a biologist that's been retained uh, right now to investigate. They're supposed to be blooming now between the end of June and early September. So he's out there. He has to do a site, oh. site walk. Okay. He has to do several site visits to see if he sees any of those. We'll see, more to come on that. Um, one thing that is, uh, I think, a, a, a big improvement to this or a big plus to this is that the whole development will be phased. So the phase, phase one will be kind of what you've already seen before. It's the conversion of the existing building from commercial to residential. Um, with that, we'll maintain the access drive. We're going to eliminate a lot of this excess, this excess parking area. Um, the remainder of the parking space is here and the access drive out and the two-way access will all be the same. So the only real improve, the only really exterior improvements are some um, some electrical work and the elimination of the impervious area that we don't need. Phase one, phase two. Once we have that constructed, is to essentially you can see this here. This is the concrete pad that's out there. We're essentially just going to project that concrete pad towards the back to get to our townhomes in the back. So starting from here. This is this phase two is the town homes to the rear. So we can still maintain the two way access. We can still maintain the parking lot here. It's really just the improvements to the back half of the site. Phase three, after those two are completed, will then be to eliminate the two way. We'll construct the, obviously the driveway first so they can still access these. We'll construct the driveway first. We can put our stormwater management improvements in and then start construction of the building. So phase three will be the mixed use. Uh, development as well as the the two-way access at that point we'll eliminate the one way as well we're going to so this is a recommendation from the dot as well to eliminate this one way which is fine um we're going to widen this section to two the two-way traffic so people can get in and out of here through the two-way access right um and then erosion and sentiment control is is similar it follows the, the phase and plan of the construction it's not this plan which is more. Okay, here we go. Can you just go back to the, sure. the previous one we had the mixed use buildings? Yep. Where is the parking for that? This here is the 
this 29 parking spaces here, as well as there's a, there's a walkway here. So there's 29 spaces here, plus an additional five and three, plus six. So it's by having walkways throughout the site, um, it's an interconnected parking lot, uh, but there's 29 parking spaces in front of this uh, mixed use building. 29 handles everything that's on that site in phase three? Um, so there's actually with phase three construction, see these parking spaces here, these are to be constructed with phase three. So these eight parking spaces here along with the 29, bring it up to the 72 spaces. Um, substitution request. Um, we are requesting a, a substitution request. Substitution for these uh, frontage sidewalks. Uh, we do front on Buddington Road on this west side. There's a very steep slope, um, as well as shallow bedrock and exposed ledge um, up over the hill. Um, and Buddington Road has also very steep slopes and um, shallow bedrock right up to the property line. Um, so we're requesting substitution to enhance the sidewalk along the frontage of our development here. We're going to um, we'll bump out some of the sidewalk areas and create almost a plaza rather than a five foot sidewalk in some areas. We'll bump it up to 10 feet um, to kind of create an area to congregate for pedestrians along the sidewalk. We'll have some benches along that. So I think by improving the sidewalk along Aquatic Road, it'll be a, a certainly a, a viable substitution in the of the, the sidewalk on Buddington. Um, also along Buddington, there's a sidewalk along the west side of Buddington Road and a crosswalk across the intersection. So um, I think pedestrians travel along Buddington Road can go along that sidewalk. The plan of that sidewalk? Yeah, let's, let's go to the existing conditions plan. This is the overall. So as you can see, this is the existing plan. There's a steep slope up to the ledge. Um, Pyre stops at the top of the ledge. Uh, you can see the walkway here. This is Buddington Road. We don't show the opposite side of Buddington Road, but there is a sidewalk on the opposite side of Buddington Road. What the improvements you're talking about? So let me go to the landscaping plan. It might be the most obvious. I can find the end. Let me start at the beginning. So where it is. Along here, um, you can see the sidewalk here. And as it comes across, we'll have the paver walkway. We'll have a park bench and some landscaping around it. And then in this area here in front of the building, we're going to widen this to 10 feet wide. So it's a little plaza setting in front of the building. We'll go back down to a five foot walk here and bump out again to a 10 foot walk. And as we mentioned, there's some park benches and some landscaping along that area. Probably it for my presentation. I'm certainly yeah. happy to take any questions as we go here. I think you pretty well covered it. I think I had a question about the concrete internal wall. Doesn't extend all the way to the townhouses. I was wondering about why that. Um, it, it was really just that it ended here at the edge of these side, at the edge of this parking space, and that was just so people who were parking in this area here could access the walkway. We figured if there were people who live in the townhomes, they could get to that walkway going across the parking lot to the walkway. So it gives you the walkway that. Uh, I, I would just assume that you know there's a walk here that if they were to walk out of there, they'd walk through the parking lot, they'd walk into the sidewalk. Other, yeah, they'd have to cross the parking lot. Um, and then sure, we do have other proposals. Um, you know what? I think we. You probably missed that. Yeah, I thought it was crazy. Okay, yes. 
I wasn't intentionally bypassing it. Um, I think we just forgot to repeat. It looks like you were keeping existing ones for a case of one two women to do a lot. We were trying to keep the street trees. There was there's plenty of street trees that are developed in 2002, which we're going to be eliminating a lot of that for the improvements for phase three, but we missed the trees. I think we don't have those showing here. Well, we had, require street trees. No, no, I understand that, but as far as this, we don't have a plan. They're not shown. There, there's no proposal for so street trees. So that should be addressed either as a bank plan or as a line item on the motion. That's another question. <laughs> Was uh, Maybe make ready. 25%. Um, what is that? I guess what does that mean? So we have to have eight TV spaces, right? Up front, mm -hmm. and then what up 25%? What they just have to have the electrical line? Have the okay. Right. So it's very easy. Gotcha. Okay. So we can just extend our electrical lines as we need to. Um, let's see. Let's go back to the one page. I didn't kind of put the 25% make right. I only kind of put the EV that you require up front. Uh, so those electrical conduits that you know, this electrical line here, we could extend that and make this entire row EV. Um, that's easier than just putting the electrical line there. Um, so that's one thing that we're going to be doing. Um, and then just to make sure we're not forgetting anything, we're going to have to do the electrical line. Putting cable in or just the like a pipe where you can put stuff. Or is it I'm not sure what makes ready. But the yeah. conduit with the line, or it doesn't really matter. No, that's, yeah, the the proposed truck. motion was the very fuzzy. Yeah. No, it was very fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah. Just sometimes they get water yeah. line. Yeah. Well, it's just yeah. so you don't have to take things up. Right. Yeah. That's not like, oh. I'll provide electric capacity necessary to accommodate the future hard wires. At least 25% of the parking space. So this installation of infrastructure to support future expansion of parking space. Um, so that's the piece of the conduit. Just the capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's not what the motion and why, or the way I interpret it. No, the motion that it's got the capacity. As EV ready. But it, well, for me, that ready. means you'd be running the cable underneath the parking lot or the face surface. You wouldn't have to take it off. And it doesn't specify what level. It's only the level two. I don't well, you don't want to just put level one in that. That means it takes you two days to charge it. The again, the regulation. Which, what's the number on it? It is 8.2 dash four B. Is um, number? Yeah. number four. So it says applicable uses developments as described in sections of 4 2 dash four B and 4 2 dash four B. We shall provide the electric capacity necessary to accommodate a future hardwire installation for EV charging stations in at least 25% of the parking spaces required. Well, he's just putting power on the site. I, I wouldn't want to go further than that. I would think it'd be after they got that's up to them. Well, there was some extra money. Well, it's cheaper than going in the It certainly is, but that's not, not required. It's not required. Not required to say But, but capacity, know. what you're saying, the capacity. Yeah. The capacity for what? It doesn't even say what it is. Or it doesn't. I would think you'd want to install the level two. I would say that. 
And that's what's required under the charging level. All so required the, the the space for non-residential uses. Yeah. That's, that's right. Have any other comments? Does that answer all your does that answer all the questions you have on the right up? No. Oh, actually, one more question. <laughs> um, the other question was the storage areas for the mixed buildings. Yep. Can you talk about that? Um, I, I, I think I just mentioned that there's storage closets available in the buildings. So there's not a designated storage area for the communal storage area. The storage shed can be used for landscaping for me. Although there's no designated separate storage room. Did you say they have 100? Yeah, uh, so I can calculate that. Yes, 100 cubic feet with the three separate closets. Uh, I can double check that. Open. open it up then to the uh, commissioners. Uh, questions that start with you. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Right? We've gone back and forth with this before the idea of public use versus setback. What we talked about was public use. But I'm, I'm for having the extra green space in front of the location. I don't know what you mean. Part of it. What's the actual requirement? I suppose overlaying the idea that every now and then there's two areas with 10 foot wide up. The plaza, the triple wide up, one of the plazas, a wide sidewalk with bench, which is somewhat welcome, but I don't know what that means. What's the actual requirement? The actual requirement is that the minimum amount of public space on site for two acres or more, the 5% of the lot area minus. So 25% of their wetlands and water poisons. So calculation they did. Um, at least one third of the minimum public space must be contiguous. Spaces available to the public in the form of plazas, deck areas, grass areas, or similar areas shall be provided. Above and beyond the required. I guess that looks like it means it doesn't throw me along. I love the idea of having the Project in general, since it links long and a landlord's apartments with the rest of downtown, and a hole in that. Now, I have something to tell them. I'm not quite sure how those shops work. They seem to move one, but the parking is in behind it. So, how does that commercial area work? I didn't see lots of linking in the sidewalks or anything like that. Can the pedestrian access the front of those buildings? Yeah, or the front of so back. Go back. Features. There's front doors on the front and the back. Um, so from the parking lot, they can access it, but there's uh, steps up to those units. Yeah, so front. This here is our front, front, front porch. This is a this is steps up with a walkway. So from the street, people can access up the stairs to this front porch area here. Um, and there's a door here for the vestibule inside. They can walk into the door. Like a porch. Yes, yeah, so there's a little porch here. Um, there's another porch here. There's this communal area in here, so anybody here could access. There's a there's an accessible ramp. To get up to this little plaza, um, this little sitting area. So if somebody in a wheelchair were to come here, they could come down this walk, up the ramp, and access the back or the front. Um, I guess that they would have to access the back. So that's that's the accessible route is in this direction. Or if you were to park in the accessible park, uh, accessible spaces here, there's a ramp here. Um, and then in the, this building here, there's a, another porch in the front here, some smaller little covered areas um, with separate entrances to each of the buildings. Well, each, I mean, we're up. This is going to get divided up, however, it gets divided up, I imagine, right? Correct. Um, so this could be. One store that's this big, or two stores that are half as big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
was having some printer issues today, which is why I have 14 of the 24 that we said in architecturals. Space. Yeah, so the way this is, this is the front porch or here. Um, this, can, this is just an open space in here. Same thing here. There's another front door. Um, which is so if this gets divided further, then there's be more front doors. Yeah, so I'll show you that. The elevation here. Yeah. 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 Realize the fortuneness of the separation between the yeah, but this doesn't really show the fact that this is, if this makes this look like this is ready, but the sidewalk's down many steps in the front of it somehow. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, this makes it feel like, oh, great, it's a sidewalk where the shops along here. And that's not it at all. It's, it's a separate thing. It's yes, the there. building is elevated just because we're in a flood zone right there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about that. How high How high would Gotham? Elevation 10, and I think we're at a finish floor of 11 and a half. Um, so we went a little bit above that flood elevation. We were one foot flood, and so we went up to 11, and then we had to go an extra six inches for some of the stormwater practices to work. Um, so that's that's how we ended up at our elevation. Well, they have that sign right there. That's right <laughs> 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 Where is that view about the pedestrian route? Well, you just cross the driveway and parking lot to get to them. I'm not keen on that. I mean, I'm thinking about identifying the pedestrian route. So, internal to the site, we do have uh, identified and accessible parking spaces. That's fine. No, that's fine. But for the departments to do that. These, uh, each we, of these units have a garage. We really want the, uh, the vehicles, it's not the pedestrian. We really oh. want these people to walk. Okay. And right now they kind of just walk out through to this way. Okay. In some way for them not to just be walking down the driveway. Um, on the side of the on the chain to identify us, this is where they're supposed to walk. If there's something um, that you know, identifies where they are, it should be a car show. We have a walkway here. Um, we have a walkway here. Um, yeah. If we were to extend the walkway here, the crosswalk here. Something like that with that you can probably put it on a great diagonal because nobody's going to be doing 90 degrees of cutting across the diagonal. Um, it takes to make, make it make sense. You also want to be able, wanting to be able to walk straight down. Can they do that now? Make it to we'll say the spot. Come down straight down here and walk across the street. How would they do that? Um yeah so they would have to go you know you imagine how they do that. Yes. Yeah. So I need to figure out how to do that because we want them to be able to walk to the spot. That's kind of that's kind of practical. I like the spot too. <laughs> that's, that's that's just that's the entrance downtown. That's where things start to be. That's where we want to be able to get there. And how can I identify it better? You know, once you get to Dairy Queen, once you get to the side, once you get to anything that's down there, we want them to walk. That's where they're going to walk and. Oh, I'm just walking down the driveway for a long way. Um, and you don't want to go, it doesn't have to be completely isolated, but the idea you don't want to cross the driveway a couple different times across one side, walk down the way across the other side. This makes some sense. Um, I don't want to solve it right here. No, I don't, but it does like need to be enough. solving. Okay. That straight through the, the lighting. What's happening with the lighting? Uh, it's on the landscaping plan, and there's a photometric plan. No photometric. Yeah. Kind of lights and how quickly they get on. Yeah, that, I think that's the type of light is on the actually. 
we were going to connect through this one. These are the lights. I, I don't have. Okay, I don't have the full plan. Rally D pictures. Do it on this photometric plan. Okay. Along the front of the uh, there will be building sconces. Um, I don't have those details, uh, but there will be obviously some downlighting on the buildings. Does that require some other one? Is these pauses <laughs> that they're, they're pauses that they're changed with something that's part of the, of the public area? So maybe kind of popped up to Um, is it just some dollars or something? Not dollars, it would be a red light. How much is it? You can see people's I'm going to have a bench for benches sitting out for them. 10 foot wide area. It should be, should be lit. I don't know what the ambient light is from the street lights there. I don't know. I guess it's not much. Are they, are the street lights near? Do you know? I'm not sure. Um, okay. If the ambient light from the street lights is not, then I feel okay. It's okay, but I don't think it would be much. Um, there's a utility pole. There are utility poles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Whose overhead is on the utility? Big, a big green utility pole. Yeah. Yeah. Very high up. But they're over the street. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. And then the other thing is you have to remember the other pole. I don't think it's going. Well, no, it's like between the two, between the street lights, which are going the street, and the building lights, there's not a huge area in between the two. Um, I don't, there won't be a dark area. Um, I don't know. No, I would say the announcement about it, but I don't know. Probably like five meters out there in the middle of the street, and up to one over the little plazas in the back. There'll be a bench there. You don't want for somebody to sit there. You don't want to sit there. It'll be kind of a little dark. I think that, I'm sure they're going to go for that as well. I don't know if you want it to be uh, inviting. That's true. But it's the thing. Especially once you get the street trees up there. And it's going to be blocking the sidewalk from some of the light, the other lighting. Mm -hmm. So it's going to get pretty dark. And, oh, the trash. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have. Yeah, there's three separate dumpster areas. Um, there's a the first phase of construction. The dumpster is located here, but it's for the five units. The second development, the dumpsters are in the back. The third development, the dumpsters are here. Right. I'm so excited because this is like <laughs> we've worked so hard to get this mixed use, and I think you're yeah. really taking advantage of the site. Horizontal. I just have a couple. Uh, right. the, the street lights that house or the lights that you're talking about there. My only concern with that would be because I know I have a street light that shines in my bedroom window. I wouldn't want like if we did put lighting out there and we're trying to light up the park. We want to make sure that it isn't like then affecting the people who are living on the second floor of the place. So that's a, that would be my concern. I would rather see no lights for the things if it's going to be, you know, people are going to be throwing rocks at them. I reject that, but I just assume say that in this particular case, just having the dark sky would probably not be enough for that to be shielded further to people out of the yeah, I, that would be my, you know, I, I would defer to the apartment or the someone sitting out there. Yeah. Well, they, 
if it's a, it's a shield, a low fixture. Um, anyway, I don't know. Yeah, they have those. Talk about your high. Like, yeah, well, this right down. Wow. Yeah, second and third floor. Right. Oh, third floor. Third floor. Oh, bedrooms on the third floor. Yes. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, you just, just have to. Well, just just have to so you can have a 20 foot high fixture and have it with a more than the level cutoff, and you'll get it below the bedroom. Can't be just dark sky. It's going to be shielded from the sky to avoid lightning. That, that's going to be a technical item. So you're going to worry about that. So I, I'm not going to. I just I know that that light yeah. boy ended broken and it goes on and off all night long. <laughs> 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 uh, Nate, in this um, in the EV regulations, and I don't know if it means anything, but make ready is actually quoted. That's <coughs> telling me that there's some standard somewhere that. May have been used. It says the installation of infrastructures is known as make ready. Is there some, and that was done? Is there, is there like a, I, I just Googled it and like New York, and I didn't look very far, but like New York State has make ready standard. I don't know if that's in there now, but there, there might be something out there that was what make ready means because it is not pretty quoted. So the uh, what will the uh, mixed the commercial area? What are those going to be? Retail or restaurants? I think retail. I don't think restaurant is um, allowed here for the and prison apartment. Is the size of those spaces is that stagnant, or can they can could it turn into one big store, or are they? I, I think could. Could. Oh, yeah, 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 like any other storefront, absolutely, okay. as right. long as the parking works. That's and then the parking works, whether it's a big store or a little store. Like I don't want it as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. That's exactly right. And All just right. to clarify, that's the reason that there are no restaurants shown here because there's uh, parking to support the level at this point. Would that be a no-no on the Oh, it's retail. Yeah, that's the parking calculation. Oh, I know that. Oh, yeah. I did. I didn't see that specifically. Did they add more parking? Oh, they. What they. This is kind of a sidebar. What they really want is this uh, area over here. That's under issues. And they're having some issues. They really wanted to improve some parking over here. To use to lease that in town. To, um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. If that happens in the future. Um, Will be a, 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 absolutely not part of this right now. And the state will the storm drain uh, yep. in there. Uh, who maintains that riprap given that you, you're going to be using it and the state? So the state definitely. So this was pretty well covered uh, when we first did the survey. And then it must have been the state. No. 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 Okay. Actually, the town. Oh. It because the town has an easement through there for some of the drainage on Buddington. And part of the agreement with the state is that the town maintains it. It was, it was the town that came out oh, and, and cleaned it up. And then we, we couldn't even find out the first time. And then right. when we went back, but you're going to be approving it anyway. Yes, yeah, so right. and then the town is going to continue to exactly. maintain Then where? So the stormwater treatment in the state is not treated. Correct. The so where, treatment. if like uh, not that I know of those. Yeah, no, that's whatever. It's what it is, right? But um, where is it? It will be treated at the storm drain, typically, right? Or if they put a separator, and sometimes you see like they have a, a hydrodynamic separator just after the last catch basin into the point of road, um, where they have a, a sediment uh, sedimentation uh, separator that after the last catch basin, they go through that, and then it would continue to start. It's very similar to what we're proposing for this smaller section. But I don't believe there's anything out there right now that does it. So what we're doing here, this little section of pavement um, that we can't get over to this section because of the pipes and all the network in here. This is getting this little section here that's coming bypassing and getting collected here, going through a separator before this right Yeah, it's a, it's a tiny little watershed here. Right. I guess so. That's uh, then uh, the two little. Which you call them, peninsulas that go into the parking lot back there? Or, or is that, uh, uh, I'm just like wondering, like I, I imagine the moving truck coming in, right? So, like, is 
Are there any curves there? Are those mountable? Or how do you maneuver? Where um, are you? Are these two little? This one and that. Those little pencils. Yeah. Kind of truck, like if it, if it was trying to squeeze through there or something like that. Yeah, it's, so it's 24 feet wide in there. And I, 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 it just looks to me like a curve that's going to get. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is actually where the mailboxes are from. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, maybe it works then. I just, uh, I, when I see things like that, I think, and sometimes it's hard to know how wide it is, but, you know, someone's coming in with a moving truck in there. Yeah. 24 feet they wide. Don't want to them. <clears throat> All right, that's probably wide enough. Just, I look at it and I see, I, I try to imagine. And the fire department, what did they do? Uh, the shed. Uh, it can it can. Uh, so I think that's what they're intending for uh, these units and keep their bikes in their units. There's a 300 square foot storage room in this building for people to keep their bikes. I think the intent is if anybody wants to keep their yeah, bikes no, out there, they can put in that kind of a thing would be accessible to everybody. Yeah, garden tool. That all of the details they have is that exactly going to be working. There will be some garden. I'm sure this kind of a, an umbrella. Or, People can use the storage. Right. I, that's, that's, really that's, 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 uh, you know, that's 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 you know when you were doing this other one, that's what I was kind of hoping yeah. for. Was something like that. Right. Yeah. 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 And you don't need handicap in the back, right? Those are you know, they have yeah, you can yeah. and everything goes to the water river eventually. Yeah. Uh yes, this is connected hydraulically through a culvert. Um on the use of it. I, I think it's fantastic. It looks like you. That's all. Thank you. So, I just got a quick question. Um, I guess when you first came in and we gave the approval for the initial building and everything like that, there was no mention of subsequent additions to it, right? I guess my question is if you have a property of size that fits everything you're putting, it's all for the regulations. It's really a question for staff. Um, and because it's all permissible and everything, you can do that, right? You can come in and add things right under okay. it. And I guess it, my real question was, you don't need a public hearing if it's a certain increase or anything like that? <laughs> okay, well, yeah, it's just a site plan. Okay. So you yes. have a public hearing initially on the conversion, because a, a public hearing is required to convert a, a unit for a building that is not residential. But then you don't have one when you're really putting new buildings in somebody's neighborhood. I just thought it was interesting coming from zoning. Titan Square. Titan Square. Public hearing, not very tight Well, because they're allowed. That's exactly right. Because it's allowed to have a special permit, then you have to I just, we hadn't encountered this in zoning. This is curious. Thanks. That's it. I, I actually have a related question. I remember the um, massive discussions we used to have about building area where there's non-buildable oh, yeah. portions. <clears throat> Can you just refresh my memory? Um, how did that end up? Like when we were, remember we were talking about that there was, you know, if we had wetlands on an area and you say, okay, it's 11 acres, but I can only build on one acre, so I can use 100% of that. Didn't we have modifiers? Right, there are buildable land The buildable land discussion. Yeah, um, but it's only for certain uses in certain zones. Um, we never got to a blanket one. Right, that's correct. That's right. Um, that was a hot item. It was, yeah. Buildable um, land. Residential density calculations for the following uses. Um, Single unit, two unit subdivisions, active senior housing, cottage communities, residential life care, open space subdivisions. Those types of, of developments have to follow the residential density calculations, whereby you factor out the, the steep slopes and the wetlands in order to calculate what the allowable density is. Well, because of this zone, we don't. That is correct. This is interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, was there for in the uh, public spaces. Over public space, yeah, absolutely. It did, it did specifically, uh, 
the deleted the each slopes from the council to calculate the, the square footage of public space yeah. that's required. That's right. Um, you didn't mention traffic at all. Um, did we have any major heads to level of service? Uh, we the traffic report was not completed on this. I don't think it's required. Yeah. Even with the um, commercial? Huh. Okay. Um, that's it. We had a question about flood and um, lighting, and I'm good. I just had a couple of questions on the retail use. How do you expect the customers to come from the parking lot or from the street? They're hoping that in bunches from both directions. Um, but I, I'm assuming as I ask is because when you look at, at the uh, architecturals from the back side and the parking lot side, it looks like you just have one little tiny door. I think the reason for that is if people are driving here to get to the site, they know that they can park here and access the back, but if people are walking on the street, uh, the buildings are still be more appealing. Well, I know, I know. Thing. Well, that's what the regulations yep. says. But I don't know how many people in reality use that, that's why I was trying to you have adequate access from the parking lot. So. They do have um, access from the parking lot. So when you look at the, the architectural views, it looked like there was just one small door each of these units. Yeah, so there's a double door here. And there's a... um, I don't know if that's adequate or you really expect them to walk to the front of the building. And go... No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can talk to the architect about that, but I'm sure that I know they want to provide access um, on, on both sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely to cater, not to. Well, I guess they're going to cater to both sides, but if people are driving here because they're trying to get back to the source, they certainly don't want people up to get here and walk around with them. Well, you can walk down to walk. Yeah. But I mean, this building has no access. So, I mean, it's the main entrance. And the last yeah, side, yeah. you have to just walk over. That might be something that people want to look at. <laughs> Early on, not have to fix it later. So you don't want to have the place go out of business. Build it, you build it, and then they just lie idle. And we don't know because we have never seen the type of a site, especially this area. On the different phases, is there a note on the drawings that say define like could only find one for you know, the phase three? Um, yeah. I mean, then that, that, maybe that's really just a technical idea. You might want to make sure it's clear on phase one and phase two. I think so. Each of the phasings, so this is phase one. There's a narrative that's or else it's kind of phase, phase one. Uh, yeah, phase two. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. I just found the one. Yep, so that's. It's clear. Yeah, it is. Um, um, it's just kind of thin. Yeah, just eight and a half by 11 sheets. So it's <laughs> 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 fantastic. Is there any open space for the residents? Uh, there, so there is. Or these uh, the residential units. Yeah. I'm not talking. The regulations talk about public access for non residents. There should be something for residents. There is another regulation. So it's 100 square feet per unit, I believe. So 2,800 square feet required. So we have this area where the shed is located, as well as the area where. Don't come back here. People walk through it. <laughs> there ought to be something for. The residents to use it's their own own area like putting like benches or grills in there for, for something outside just 
for the residents of originally approved this being this will go wider here instead of years. Well my thing more in here, you know, mm -hmm. I'd like to see sure. mm -hmm. or even just landscape. That's your car. What about behind the units? Oh, I'm sorry. Behind the units? Um, behind these units, it's they, it's they have their own little they have their own little patios back here. Um, so each of these. Right. So I just think a common, a common, a common space. Well, I was yeah. wondering about a playground. Yeah, that well, maybe there are no kids. I don't know, but you need something like that. Is that in each of the townhomes, they're going to have kids. Each of the townhomes, they do have a patio in the back of the townhomes plus a flat area, a little bit of a yard behind it. No, no, cool. just for the individuals, but I would say as a community, for the community. I think your thing is going to get a little bit more inviting. Maybe that's good. Yeah. 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 I think that's uh, yeah. 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 And there were girls back there then? I think almost put that call. Is that on this one? No, Al seems to think that there were grills on that first when you came in the year ago. But that area was more developed. Um, I think we, yeah, I think we probably maintained almost the same shape. Um, yeah. The area there, that was pointed to us there. Yeah, I'll tell you that's actually almost like a ledge of the back of it. Is that right? Because you're all just framed by the same life. Right on top of the rock. I said there's no view from the top. <laughs> I think that's all I had for questions, except this on the resolution. Uh, and, uh, I don't know about running utilities for the EV space. You really want that mess? Because to me, it's not clear what that word is. To change the wording to say the applicant shall run utilities to designate 25% of the parking spaces as future EV spaces per the maintenance standards of section B2. Would be a little bit more specific. That explains what's required and whether they run this combination. Okay. Yeah, and that would be part of the just like the pattern. Or just the uh, yeah, I guess just as long as well, whatever that book ready, you know, maybe we need to that's all we'll figure this out once and you know, at least we're getting something in the right direction. Well, I just want to make sure it was clear. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Just so that we can, I don't want to get into means and methods. Oh, that's what I was describing what we're asking. <laughs> Maybe make ready mean something. Well, I mean, right as soon as I put it in my phone, it came up. Yeah, but I just didn't want to be like. Yeah, they did that. Know how you word this to start? It's really, I mean, it's really. It's really Applicant shall designate 25% of the parking spaces as future EV spaces. Well, that, this implies that, but I don't know. 
And you said level two is in the uh, ranks. Same level two, it says minimum voltage to play. So, you want to just say, um, so provide capacity for uh, two or so it's providing capacity for 20% of the the parking spaces is easy, or is easy ready. It's a fixed number of parking spaces right now. Well, it's easy to say. Adequate capacity. Right. Fixed number of parking spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Run, run. Right. We'll provide capacity to 10 parking spaces for 10 I think this is just I'm trying to maybe maybe this can be avoided if you put them in uh, the new, or I know it was in 2018 uh, electrical I think it was they were trying to do the electrical building or upgrade and make new construction have UV but then they didn't do it so I'm just wondering if you have UV in the garage it's just a 220 plug-in that satisfy this need or is are, are, are we just talking about public this is the public public oh, okay never mind yeah and the garage i think because these are townhouses don't you have to put them in the garage yeah, but i don't think you have i don't think it's part of it <laughs> i think i read that they were considering it but it got like dumped at the last but i don't know so you want to I'm run in the garage it would be nice to have the I don't, know, I don't usually do it. I mean, unless it's your prior. Anyway, I was just trying to maybe yeah, not work around it somehow. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, but it's, but it's public. But it's public. The, the issue of, of the portway uh, from townhouses, that, you know, do that as a technical element. Well, I don't know if you want to have that. Okay. Well, if you want to do that. Oh, yes. <laughs> the applicant shall connect the rear townhome unit to the rest of the site with a continuous pathway. So, you want to make it. That's to the rest of the site, but also a you know, direct path to the street. Yeah, to the river. Yeah. 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 No question about the lighting on the front public space because I'll just do that. I address with all the signs that people with something about the street trees. The street yeah, trees yeah, is a got it, got it. specific element. Yes, 
first time around. You seen this? I haven't, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see it? Yeah, but that's okay. There might be some secret thing in there. No, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's, those are the only changes that you want to do. I'll make I'll make a motion. I'm trying to uh, have to make it an amendment still. <laughs> make a motion to approve site plan as 22 dash 06 for a mixed use development 1154 Pequonic Road. For the following modifications. <laughs> One, street trees shall be provided at the proper intervals along the Quantic Road. Two, the applicant shall provide capacity for 10 parking spaces if he be ready. Three, at least one handicapped accessible charging space shall be designated on the plans. Four, the interior crosswalk will be changed from striping to decorative tables. Five, the applicant shall connect the rear column units to the rest of the site with a continuous walkway to the quantity road. Okay. Uh, rather, you two want to sign up rather than the final road. Are you ready? Right. Okay. Oh, really? Put, you put the whole thing in. Yeah. I said, it's a chronic road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd rather leave the road. Mm -hmm. um, item six 100 cubic feet of storage space shall be provided to 50% of the new construction residential unit. Seven, a note shall be placed on the plan that states, quote, any modification. So this plan opposed by another federal, state, or local agency shall require additional review of town staff or the commission, whichever is appropriate. And the quote, eight technical items as raised by staff shall be addressed. Findings, the commission finds this application complies with section 5.1-8.G, multi-unit dwellings. Commission finds a sidewalk on the east side of Bloodington Road does not exist due to the present presence of ledge. Proposed substitution of a widened sidewalk and landscape plaza space along the Route 1 frontage meets the intent of Section 8.3-5B in that the existing topography makes the sidewalk on Bloodington Road impractical. Commission accepts the design. Location of the pedestrian improvements along the frontage of Monic Road and concludes the sidewalk on the easterly side of Wellington Road is not required. The commission finds that the project meets the applicability standards for reduction in parking under the shared parking calculations of section 8.2 is there a second? Move second. Any discussion on the motion? You don't see any. Sure. Thank you. No one has any comments on it. And we'll vote on the uh, motion for site plan approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Have a CAM motion. Motion to approve the coastal site plan application for SIT 22 06 based upon the following finding. Commission hereby finds that the application is modified is consistent with all applicable goals and policies of CGS 22A-92 
and incorporates all reasonable measures which would, would mitigate adverse impacts of the proposed activity on both coastal resources and on existing and future water dependent activity. Anyone have any questions or comments on the motion? So we'll vote on approval for the CAM motion for site plan 2206. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Aye. Um, I mean, they're renovating this now, and um, they already have the funding to start doing this. I think they have the funding for all that um, they're waiting now, I think. Some of the prices have come down to build this right now. But yeah, I think they do have the money to start. So we're going to start as soon as they can. Thank you. That's the bottom of the board. Okay, all of this will get. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, referral. We have one uh, referral from Town of Stonington zoning regulation. So you see that they are um, adopting cannabis regulation. Um, maybe four or five months ago, they um, imposed a moratorium on it because they developed these regs. Um, the only they're going to allow some of these uses in a number of different zones. The only ones that are near Groton are off of exit 90. They're going to be allowing uh, cannabis delivery service in their general commercial and delivery service and retail establishments in their tourist commercial. So all the rest are either commercial. Yeah, so, 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 I don't know how to interpret it. But the narrative is, is worth I just print out the okay. phone. So I spent half an hour figuring out which pages. I have a laser printer. I have a laser printer. I have a laser printer. So, oh. end you know, up crashing the whole time. So. But by the time I got it down here, I sort of stayed with the one of those cases. Yeah, that goes through about one of your things. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was treasure. Condo associations. Really great. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Nobody has any Thank concerns, you. I assume. So it's one thing, thing. Okay, report of chair. Just a reminder we have a workshop on Thursday, at six o'clock. I, I cannot come. Mm -hmm. The big conference room on the waste now. The council living here. Are they going to move all those things down to the No, I think they will be moving back. We've gotten a lot of work done on the HVAC system oh. here, so really? hopefully it smells less moldy. And <laughs> <laughs> That's why public works did it on purpose because they want to <laughs> have the HVAC system. It drove them out. And there's a uh, committee of chairpersons uh, meeting at five o'clock on Monday. 
The announcement and the, the, the agenda was the agenda. Announced. Right. That's the agenda stuff. Come on. And there, I got notice uh, about a meeting on next Tuesday about the future of retail businesses in Broughton and people in the rest of the town. That I don't know. That was some. And there's a meeting about on the uh, Mystic Parking Study Group on next Friday, July 22nd, mm -hmm. one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be, you know, that's all I got. <laughs> Anyone else? On the commission of anything to report? Yes, sir. I did have a nice conversation with Tom Wilson about the 30 by 30, 30% open space by 2030. Mm -hmm. And he sent me his, his amazing spreadsheet with every parcel in town. Um, everyone the town has is open space and everything else. And we talked off of that for quite a bit. And one question I have for him. As I asked for the definition of 30 by 30 at the federal level, the state, and the largest, and just to make sure we're talking about hitting that target, it could be a lot of different things. <clears throat> but um, I, I think it's an interesting challenge. Um, and it's good because Tom and I have a little bit, we have different ideas too, which works out well because it makes for more ideas. Uh, I'm talking about the forestry land. Things like that. So anyway, it's just a beginning. <clears throat> I think it was on their agenda, conservation commission this week. So I'll see what's happening. But it's going slow, but it is going. Anyone else have anything for staff? What had I done? Hang on <laughs> No, I fell through it. Yeah. It did. Um, and I, right now, um, Mr. Gates is working with um, the fire marshal to collect some of these trees. We can see the bar basically that will require some site work, and we'll see if we can ever figure out what needs to be done. Well, what happened to the bank itself? Right. I, yeah, I don't. I that deal fell it. through. I just know what I read in the paper. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. 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 Interest in that? No, so, I mean, I think it was on the market. I don't know that it is anymore. Um, and we had a couple of inquiries for for person, but I don't see anything other than that, other than there's no one living in there right now. Right. But it is on the market. It was on. It was. I don't know that it still is. <laughs> do we do we actually have people living in the central hall? Building? No, we don't see those yet for, for the residential units. Still nothing. I thought I saw curtains up, so yeah, I, 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 I started taking the labels off the windows. Uh, right. I was excited. Don't see it. What's that? Eight, ten years? Three years. No, 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 Application updates we have that. And AFP. Yes. 
know, my, my neighborhood. Who uh, SDR is coming from? Accessory dwellings. Oh. <laughs> Returning garages. Hey, okay. anybody have anything else? Uh, no.